You can feel the love, glory be to God, that he really loves you. No matter what we've been through, no matter what we've done, hallelujah, he still loves us. His word declares, hallelujah, that, that the love, hallelujah, covers a multitude of sins. And because he's loved us, he's died on the cross and he shed his blood. And that his love is so great that forgiveness is available today. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank God for those that are you're listening and that you're watching. Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise for our wonderful apostle, Shane Wall, our pastor. Amen. Glory be to God. All of this week, I've been hearing two words all over the place, no matter where I go. I hear let it go, and I hear peace. It may be in a song, it may be coming from just walking by and there's a casual conversation. All I keep hearing is let it go. Let it go and God's peace will come. But sometimes we want to fight the battle ourselves. There's an old song we used to say, if we hold our peace and let the Lord fight our battles, then victory will surely be ours. But say, no, God, I want to fight this one myself. I'm going to do it right. I'm going to do it godly. I, I'm going to show your love when I do it, God. I, I'm going to follow the proper chain of command. No. He says, let it go. You want to fight and just get this little piece because you're surely going to get the victory, but I have something so much greater for you if you just let it go. And today, we ask, as I know that you can see behind me, that it says, how forgiveness brings peace. We just shared it with you. Let it go. It is so much power in us to be able to let it go. But God, I need your help to forgive them. No, I have forgiveness waiting on you if you let it go. But God, it keep coming to my mind over and over and over and over. You still have the power to let it go. You have the power to get it off of your own mind. We waiting on God to get it off of our mind when the Bible declares in Romans 12 that if we would renew our minds, to be not entangled with the ways of this world, but renew our minds. And how do you renew your mind? By what you feed it by what you hear, by what you're listening to, by what you are reading. So we must continue to renew our mind. There's thoughts that come to all of our minds. And all of those thoughts don't belong to you. Glory be to God. The enemy comes. He, he wants to impress his thoughts on your mind to carry out his will so that he can use your power to destroy. Glory be to God. But you have to stand still and know. You have to be strong. You have to resist the devil. And he will surely flee. Those are surely not your thoughts. What's wrong with me today? Why is that on my mind? You have to stop and say, wait a minute. That's not my thought. But how forgiveness brings peace. And again, over and over, I kept hearing, let it go. Let it go. So as we begin to look at how forgiveness brings peace, the Holy Spirit had me go back and look at all the messages of own peace that we've been doing. It's been about five messages, right? So even before I knew that this was going to happen, the Holy Spirit said, go back and take a look at that. So when I got ready to go back from the first one, the formula, the formula for peace, this is what I heard immediately. So, you know, I'm eager. I'm ready to go back. I know the Holy Spirit is going to share, me some, share something with me about the message that I didn't see or I didn't hear, just something great he want to tell me. But out of that first message, he stopped me right here. When pastor said, let it go, the Holy Spirit said, stop. Stop right there. But I said, no, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm a completer, so I, I want to see the rest of it. I want to watch it all over again. But I said, stop right there. He says, let it go. And then I went on to the next one. He did the formula for peace guaranteed, too. So I'm all eager. I think I'm going to get the whole, you know, 30, 40 minutes experience, you know. 
Then I heard, don't try to figure it out. And the Holy Spirit said, stop right there, stop right there, stop right there. I said, oh, I want to go further. He said, no, stop right there. Let it go. Don't try to figure it out. Then we got on the third one. I said, well, uh, I, I'm, he breaking me in by now. I said, okay, I'm going to get a few minutes in, and that's all I'm going to get. This, you know, so I'm prepared now. Then it says, the formula for peace, guaranteed part three. And here's what I heard when I got to it. Get so close to God that you can smell him. Whew. Whatever's troubling you. Whatever is causing you the displeasure in your heart, which causes separation from God's comfort, you got to let it go. Don't try to figure it out. Spend more time with God. Get so close to God that you can smell him. Then I looked at four. Then it says the formula for peace guaranteed part four. I said, all right, lay it on me. And it said, focus on God. Build your hope on things eternal. Be not entangled with the ways of this world. Amen. Then number five. He says, know the end of a thing. The blessing is always at the end of a thing. Know that your father will always come through for you. He may not give you the whole piece of the puzzle. For we see through the glass darkly for we prophesy in part and we prophesy in time but if we trust in the Lord with all our heart leaning not to our own understanding you just have to trust and know that our father is going to work it out and however he works it out it will be better than anything that we could have ever put together. Amen. Just trust in him. Trust in him. That's how you know what the end going to be. He, he shared with us in, in, in 1 Corinthians uh, that, that, that there's no thing that could come against us. There's no temptation. There's no desire that, that, that we have to even fall to. Because the Lord would do what? He will always make a way of escape for us. So in the midst of the storm, in the eye of the storm, glory be to God. All we have to do is trust him. Hallelujah. We don't have to know exactly what's going to happen. We want to know what's going to happen. And he says in Matthew, I believe that's Matthew 6, 8 through 13. He, he give us instructions. He say, do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. But we got to be anxious for nothing. See, we, we get a little anxious, and we want to start making the decisions on our own. I got to make this decision because in the past, if I didn't do something, this was going to happen. Or, 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 you know, I'm, I'm getting ready to run out of this, so I better go buy up this. And now I'm, and God says, no, I got something and someone available. Amen. But if we be anxious, anxious derives a fear, 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 fear. Everything going on around us now is to cause fear and to try to make us act in a way that we should not be acting. Amen. Glory be to you. He said, do not be like them, for your father knows what you have need of before you ask him. He says, pray therefore like this, our father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There's nothing in heaven lacking. There's nothing in heaven that has error in it. There's nothing in heaven that can separate you from the presence of God. There's oh, Glory be to God. So if we pray your kingdom come, Hallelujah. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Glory be to God. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgiven, as we also have forgiven. Let go of the debts and have given up resentment against our debtors. You got to let it go. 
Glory be to God. You got to let it go before God even will let your sins go. Hmm. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. How forgiveness brings peace. It says, for if you forgive people their trespasses. For if you forgive people their trespasses, their reckless and willful sins, leaving them, letting them go, and giving up resentment, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Glory be to God. Why? Because forgiving will put you in position to continuously be in God's comfort. Hmm. Forgiving will put you in position to continuously be in God's comfort. What is God's comfort? Peace. The enemy just want to get us out of God's peace. The messages that we have here are prophetic. They prepare you. If you notice, when, when pastor began the peace message, immediately we, we begin to receive news, even from here, that, you know, death. And, and then all around us, every time you turn on the television, that there is some type of youth shooting, uh, you, you know. So it prepared us for it. So the enemy tries to come and take us away from that peace. So it was known that well, there were some things that was going to try to come to shake us, that there was going to be some things that we visited over the last month or so that tried to come take our peace. But we have to be prepared to forgive even before forgiveness is needed. We have to be prepared to forgive even before forgiveness is needed. And that makes it easier. But if not, we're going to try to harbor it in our hearts. And there's going to be a load of resentment. And then you're going to want revenge. You want to avenge yourself again when the Bible clearly states that vengeance is mine. Say if the Lord, I am just to repay. You just stay in my comfort. You just stay in my peace. It says, but if you do not forgive, see, how can I be saved if the Father does not forgive me? How? There is no way that me or anybody else in here can be saved if the Father does not forgive me. And we just read in Matthew that if I don't forgive first, there is no way that the Father is going to forgive me. So we have to ask ourselves, the person that the enemy allows to come against us, and it disturbs our peace with God, we have to ask ourselves, is it really worth it? I'm not going to forgive them. I'm going to, well, you're the only one hurting. They going on about their business. They done said what they said and said, I said what I said and what you going to do about it. Amen? Amen. So you're going to allow them to disturb your peace and you're going to turn around and go to a living hell? Is it that important? It is not that important. So how can I be saved if the Father don't forgive me? It's not that important. It's more important that I go ahead and forgive. Sincerely, it's more important that I do what? And the quicker I let it go, hallelujah, the closer I can draw to Christ. It's too late in the evening now. 
to be messing around. He could come at any moment, any second. Does it really matter to you that much? He said, how can I be saved? How can I claim to be saved if I can't forgive others? How can I even claim that? Well, we're going to have to let this set a while. No, you ain't. Don't let it set a while. Go ahead. Don't let it fester. Go ahead and let it go. Because at the end of the day, you're not hurting them. They're not hurting you. We are hurting God. Somebody do something to me, and I don't forgive them. I'm not hurting them by not forgiving them. I'm hurting God. David said, against you and you alone have I sinned. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. What about, what about Bathsheba? What about the baby? What about Uriah? That was after you sinned. That was the cause of the very initial disobedience. So if I don't forgive, I'm not hurting anybody else. I'm hurting. If I don't forgive others, it'll take me out of God's comfort. It will take me out of the peace of God. Matthew 18 and 20. This is very important to God. Then Peter came up to him and said, Matthew 18, 21 through 22. Lord, how many times... May my brother sin against me, and I forgive him, and do what? As many as up to seven times? Jesus answered him. Jesus answered him. I tell you not. I tell you, not up to seven times. But 70 times seven. As many times as it takes. That doesn't mean the same person, the same deal, uh, or be a doormat, let somebody do something over and over. No, that means that forgiveness is that important to God that no matter what happens to you in this life, that we are ready and able to forgive. And, and we've learned that we can ask for forgiveness and we can ask someone to forgive us sometimes people don't want your forgiveness we're talking right so we've learned that we have to pardon them God saw you sincerely trying to offer sincere and true forgiveness then we can pardon and then we can go on not that we don't care because all souls are his they may come make say that may bring them back to you for prayer. That may bring them back to the kingdom of God. But when we're more concerned about us, how I feel, and, and give you peace of my mind, you need to go get that peace back. Keep it, hold it. There are some things that we all want to do. In the very beginning, I made a statement that God, hey, wait a minute. I can do it a godly way. I need to do this. Said, no, you don't. Let it. Go. There's no way out of it. Forgiveness is just that important to God. Unforgiveness would literally separate us from God. Hmm. What is the opposite of peace? What is the opposite of peace? We always say war, don't we? Well, what is the opposite of peace? There it is. Most of the time we say war, but what does war bring? War just brings fear, scare tactics. That's exactly what's going on all around us right now. Oh, there's no, you know, all the stuff is out at sea. We can't get it shipped in. Oh, you better go do something. The grocery stores is getting thin. My God said he'll provide for us. 
not according to this earth, but to his riches and glory. So we just have to be wise and, and seek God. And he'll share with us what to do, when to do, how to do it. And if we don't get anxious, I love that scripture about be anxious for nothing. But make your request known through prayer and through supplication. Ooh, that part sound good. But it's the next part that really blessed me. Glory be to God. It says if we do that, then the peace of God that surpasses above all understanding will show up. So if I'm not afraid and I go ahead and make this quick decision because I'm afraid of what may happen next and I'm trying to protect myself and I'm trying to take care of my family. No, he said if I just be anxious for nothing. If I don't get in a hurry. If I just say, okay, God, I acknowledge what's going on around me. Father, what must I do that will be according to your will? Because I, we, we, he made us very intellectual. So we know some things. But is it the will of God for that particular situation, for that particular moment? Fear and peace are opposites. They don't go together. Fear and peace are opposites. You can't have both. They don't go together. Amos, and the only really thing out of Amos I, we would like for you to see today, and I'm going to fast forward to it, is verse 3. Do two walk together except they make an appointment and have agreed? We always hear, let's, does two walk together? Fear and peace can't go together. So what are we trying to say today? That anything that's going to bring you out of God's comfort, anything that's going to disturb your peace, go ahead and just let it go. I'm stronger now. I can face it. No, you can't. Because you might have did good this month, but next month you're going to slide back in there. And then you're going to be separated from God. Is it worth it? How can two walk together lest they agree? And if you read all the Amos, they start telling you about the animals that may agree and may not agree. So I want to let you know that it's not only about people that don't agree. If the spirits don't agree, let it go. Hallelujah. And if I was at a youth conference, I'd talk to the younger ladies and the younger men. If you saved, I'm just going to put it on the table and they not let it go. Because at the end of the day, you gonna mess up. That demon that they working with is only designed to pull you out of God's peace. And if you go and you leave here out of God's peace, hell is alive and well. It is not worth it, family. It is not worth it. If the Holy Spirit in the Bible declares with love and kindness, have I drawn thee if the Holy Spirit can't draw them with love and kindness, oh, Lord, I'm going to leave it like this. You won't either. Don't care how smart you are. And, and you know I got to go old school on them, Coca-Cola bottle shape. It don't matter. If love and kindness through the Holy Spirit don't draw, you are not going to do it either. So why waste your time on that? Don't waste your time. Don't waste yourself. How do two walk together? They, you got to agree. Say, will a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? No, lion ain't wasting his time. So we shouldn't either. On things that's going to take us out of God's peace. Glory be to God. When two people, two thoughts are not on one accord, they are in discord and dysfunction and brings confusion and disorder. I don't care what bow on it. I don't care how it's wrapped. I don't care what money it has. I don't care what connections it has. That does not sound like God's comfort. That is not God's peace. Passing off a talk about this. 
talk about the shows that, you know, we may should watch and ones we should not watch. And, you know, last Wednesday I heard this, and I got to be thinking about that thing, you know, and it says that I heard this. We shouldn't watch certain shows because the shows that are forbidden do not renew our minds. It does entertain us. And we know that entertainment means hold your attention so that something else can enter. See, if something's in your mind that's not like God, then strongholds can come and hide in that spot. Glory be to God. Let's move a little bit further here. There's no way out. Glory be to God. Say, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Glory be to God. Forgiveness destroys the work of the enemy. Forgiveness destroys the work of the enemy. Four means to do in advance. One way to destroy the work of the enemy is by doing it in advance. See, the enemy is not omniscient. He's not omnipresent. He don't know what you're going to do before you do it. He don't know what the future's going to be, but he study us, and he'll know my next move. Well, I'm going to wait right before time to go to do this, and then he can come in and cause disruption. And now you're all out of the peace of God. But if you do it in advance... You'll be smiling. Better luck next time. Glory be to God. Give means to freely transfer the possessions to someone or something. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave up his only begotten unique son so that whoever believes and trusts and clings to relies on him shall not perish come to destruction, be lost, but have eternal and everlasting life. God forgave us in advance. Give means to transfer freely. He transferred the sins of this world to his son that died on the cross for the remission of our sins that we would have the ability to be forgiven and to be in God's peace. How forgiveness brings peace. <laughs> Father, we come before you by Jesus Christ, thanking you and giving you glory and honor and praising your name because who you are. Hallelujah, you have given us the opportunity to be forgiven. And for that, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving us instruction and information today, Lord, that will keep us in perfect peace if we would just keep our minds stayed on thee. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving us of our sins, Lord, that we would be saved and delivered from a living and eternal hell. Thank you for your son Jesus dying on the cross. Hallelujah, that we will have the right to eternal life. Father, give us your strength, hallelujah, that we will use our power, that we will use the authority that you have given unto us, Lord, that we can let it go. And then your peace will come. Father, by Jesus Christ, we give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. There may be one listening and watching here with us who want to return your life to Christ. Just repeat us after us today. Say, Father, forgive me that your peace shall return into my heart. Forgive me from the darkness that I've entertained in this world. Father, we let it go so that we can have you. We believe, Lord, that you are our savior. We believe that you died and that God rose. 
you on the third day. And we thank you now because we want to walk in your peace endlessly. We want to walk in your peace continuously. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. And Father, now fill me with the precious Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, that we shall be sealed. And that the things that try to draw us away will have strength against. Hallelujah. We give you glory and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen.